The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. Somebody say, Be on your way. Be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. Verse 2, but Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Amen. You may take your seats as you are taking your seat. I'm going to be talking this morning from the subject. You need an oil change. Huh. Mm. All right now. All right now. All right now. Come on now. Um, and because I was raised Baptist, I, I got to have a subtopic. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever been to a Baptist church, but um, my Baptist roots require that I have a subtext this morning. And so if I had a subtext, it would be this, how the church has gotten away with murder. Oh, oh my preach. God. Preach. <laughs> preach, preach. Um, now, I, I've, I've come here a few times, um, and we have shouted and danced and worshipped. Um, I don't know if this is going to be one that you dance on. Um, but I guarantee you, with open ears and open hearts, uh, God is about to do something and change your life on today. Um, it's time for an oil change. You, when you uh, when you have a car, I, I, I recently had uh, one of my cars, um, unfortunately, go home to be with the Lord. <laughs> and um, the reason was this. I, I've had this car for years, uh, probably for eight years, and it was it was already uh, a used car when I got it. We took really good care of it and drove it all up and down the East Coast. Um, it served us well, but the last year, we got a, a second car, and um, because uh, the maintenance on the, on the first car got to be expensive, there were some things that kind of fell by the wayside, and we looked up one day, and we realized it had been a while since we got the oil changed in the in the car. So we took it to the shop to get the oil changed, and the mechanic said, um, "So, Mr. Caldwell, I I'm not I don't I'm not going to do this oil change um, because it's been so long since you've had an oil change. Um, it's caused so much damage to the engine mm -hmm. that uh, doing an oil change now would actually do more harm than good." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it, the old oil had been circulating through the engine for too long. Yes. Uh -oh. um, when the uh. oil is new, it provides lubrication so that the parts of the engine can function the way they're designed to without friction. Yes. Uh -huh. um, it can function the way it's designed to without one part damaging another part. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. See, when, 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 the, when, when, the, when the engine is running, there are all kinds of parts that are doing their thing. The, yes. the spark plugs are going, the pistons uh -huh. are going, the fuel yes. injector is yes. going. Yes. All these parts are doing their thing. And the oil is what allows each part to do its thing without damaging the part next to it. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. but, 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 but when the oil gets old, it loses its ability to lubricate those parts. It, it loses its ability to, to reduce that friction between the parts. So now parts that were working together without friction are now rubbing up against each other in a way that's causing damage to them. Uh, they are functioning as they're designed to, but what was designed to help them function is no longer performing its job. Not because uh, oil isn't needed, but because the oil was too old. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because oh. the oil was too old. And, and, and if you let the oil go for too long, something that was designed to help is now causing harm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. My God. My God. Come on, preach. Something that was designed to help is now causing harm. Yeah. And he said, Mr. Caldwell, the, if I do the oil change, um, a couple of things are going to happen. Um, because the engine has been operating with old oil for too long, it's developed a certain kind of pressure. Yeah in the engine and just the very act of changing the oil can change that pressure and now cause more damage than, than, than having the old oil would have done if you just left it in there. My God. Yes. There's seals that are under a certain amount of pressure because of the quality of the oil that's in there and if you take new oil and put it in there, you're going to cause those seals to burst uh -huh. because they can't handle yes. the new oil because they've become accustomed to the old oil. 
They've become accustomed to the old oil. They have developed themselves around the fact that the oil is not doing what it's supposed to do, and they've, they've adjusted to the fact that the oil is not is not is not uh, lubricating the way it was supposed to. The, the 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 viscosity of the oil, the the thickness of the oil is now thin, and so the parts have adjusted to the fact that the oil is now too thin to do what it was designed to do, and so and so they 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 warped and bended themselves in such a way uh, to accommodate the old oil. But now that the oil, if I if I put new oil in now, it's going to throw all of that out of balance. Uh -huh. It's going to throw all of that out of balance. I said, so what am I supposed to do, Mr. McKenna? He said, well, Mr. Caldwell, um, I, 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 can, I can go ahead and change the oil for you if you really want me to, but just know that there might be damage down the road. Uh -huh. And all of this could have been avoided, Mr. Caldwell, if you had changed the oil when you were supposed to. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. If you had changed the oil when you were supposed to do to do it. There was there was a time frame for the, the oil. There was a season for how long that oil was supposed to last. Yeah. And when that season was over, you were supposed to come in yeah. to the mechanic and let us change the oil so we can get rid of the old oil because that season for the old oil is over yeah. and I can give you new oil so you can go on further now. Yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, um, and I said, well, Mr. Mechanic, you're preaching to me. Um, because, because the mistake I made was I didn't recognize the time to change the oil. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, my God. The only mistake I made was I didn't recognize the time to change the oil. And and the longer I went past that time, the more damage I did to my car. Yeah, yeah. Pressure Um there is hmm, how do I want to say this? There is a season for every anointing. Uh -huh. There is a season for every anointing. There is a time when what was working today will not work tomorrow. There is a time when the way we did it is not the way we need to do it. There is a time when 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 the oil, there was nothing wrong with the oil. Mm -hmm. It was just time for new oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. There was nothing wrong with the old oil. Yeah. Uh -huh. The old oil did exactly what it was supposed to do when it was supposed to do it. Yeah. But because the season for that oil was over, I had to change it to new oil so that I could go beyond where I was. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. So that I could go beyond where I was. And 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 there is a phenomenon that 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 the church has become gripped by. Mm -hmm. uh, Work through it, let me let me say it this way: the the greatest enemy to the next thing is the now thing. The the greatest enemy of the next thing is is the now thing. The 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 the. Huh. The thing that gets in the way of your next breakthrough is how closely you're aligned to the old one. There is, there is a point where your testimony becomes a trap. There is a moment when, when your testimony becomes a trap. When you it, there's nothing wrong with celebrating what God has done for you as long as you don't get stuck on what he did for you and forget about what he has yet to do with you. And don't forget about uh, uh, what he has for you next. I, I, I got to move quickly. I know the time is, I want to move quickly. In, in our text, uh, I only gave you two verses because this uh, these two verses set up exactly where the church is right now. Um, right. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Mm -hmm. oh my. 
since I have rejected him as king over Israel. So, so what this tells me is that uh, Samuel knew that Saul was out. Yeah, yeah. Samuel knew that Saul was rejected. Come on. But he was so tied to yeah. the idea of Saul yeah. that the thought of losing Saul caused him to mourn. Uh -huh. Samuel got stuck. Got stuck. Mm. Samuel got stuck. Mm. Saul was never his choice. Uh -huh. But because he was the choice that, that, that was made, Samuel got stuck on that choice. Uh -huh. I've invested something in Saul. I've invested something in this kid. I've invested something in making sure he gets the job done. I've given up time. I've given up talent. I've given up treasure in making sure that this thing happens. And, and, and Samuel was invested in Saul. Samuel was invested in Saul working out. And so when God said Saul is no longer the one, when God said Saul is no longer the one, Samuel started mourning. That's the book, sir. Samuel was, was depressed. Samuel said, I know I didn't do all this. Uh -huh. Only to have God reject it. Uh -huh. nice. Samuel was tied to the man and forgot the oil was on the office. Ah, <laughs> Jesus. There was a time when Saul was what Israel needed. Uh -huh. There was a time when Saul gave Israel exactly what God wanted. But when it was time for Saul's time to be over, rather than move to the new thing, Samuel was stuck in the old thing. Yes. How many of you have invested time and energy in something, in relationships, in, in ministry, only to find God saying it's time to move on, but you're so stuck in what you have given already, you're, you're, you're not able to move to the new thing and give more. Oh. Instead, you spend your time mourning what you've already given. Uh-huh. 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 Mourning what you've already done. Mourning what was. They don't praise like they used to. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They don't shout like they used to. My, my, my. They don't sing songs like they used to. Called well. They don't do church like they used to. Uh huh. <laughs> when I was coming up, called well. When I was coming up, they 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 did it this way. Sir, I'm coming down your street. Yes, I am. Yes, when 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 I was growing up, they now, and listen, I, I won't know. I can say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. When 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 I was coming up, they did it a certain way. And, and church looked like this, and church sounded like this, and the people did these things. This is what ministry meant. This was how you dressed when you came to church. This was what you did when you came to church. These were the kind of people that came to church. This was the way you got people to come to church. Uh -huh. You went to find somebody that was at somebody else's church and get them to come to your church because they were mad with their pastor, so they figured they can do a better job at your church than they would do at their church. And the stuff that their old pastor wouldn't let them do, they'll come into your church and say, well, now, since you let me do this thing to my old pastor wouldn't let me do. I believe this is where I'm supposed to be. And so we build churches on other people's members and we build relationships with other people's husbands. And we go, you better preach. You better preach. I can't fool with him. Lord Jesus. My, my, my. We've invested so much in what was, mm -hmm. you lose sight of what God's Miss going to do, yeah. what God's going to do next. Yeah. Uh, but in this season, I believe there's an oil change. Yeah. The, the greatest enemy to the next thing, the greatest enemy to the next move of God is sometimes the old move of God. Yes. And so, what happens is when God wants to do something new, uh, church people don't like letting go of the old and embracing the new. Samuel said, you want me to do this thing, but how can I go and release this new oil? Because if I go, the old thing will kill me. If I bring this new thing that I know you've given me, mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm scared to do it mm -hmm. because I believe the old thing will kill me. Mm -hmm. well. Now, I, I've got news for you. Um, this verse 2, what, said, what Samuel said in verse 2, this is what's happening in our churches today. Amen. The church has killed so many new things. How many, uh, ooh, this might be the last time I come here, Mom. How, 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 how many, uh, how many infant moves of God have been aborted because the church rejected them? Because the church rejected them because it didn't look like what they were used to. It didn't sound like what they were used to. It made you uncomfortable. It made you uncomfortable. Because that's not the way you've done it. Uh -huh. oh, we, we don't do it that way. I, I've never done that before. I've, 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 ne I've never, I've never, hmm, I've never, I've never gone uh, into a barbershop and paid for all of the haircuts and said, this is uh, on behalf of Kingdom Life Church. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> Sir! Um, I've never, I've never gone to a grocery store and the church uh, sits at each aisle of the grocery store and says, these people are getting their groceries paid today. Uh-huh. All right. And we don't want anything in return. This is just the love of Jesus expressed in a practical way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my. Yeah. That's what church is. This, 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 uh, uh, hmm. <laughs> this, this current season for this oil, this isn't, um, a three night revival. Um, uh, God help me here. This, this isn't, this isn't a three night revival. Walk your way, Walk your way this, through. This isn't, this isn't, this, this season here isn't, uh, uh, throw open the doors of the church and just expect people to miraculously find their way in. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. This, this season, um, I'm, 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 I'm going to help somebody real quick. This season um, isn't the season for church ease, mm. for churchology mm. and church language. Uh-huh. Come on now. Yeah. It's serious. <laughs> I challenged somebody once and they had such a hard time with it. I said, what is the anointing? They said, it's the power of God to remove burdens and destroy yokes. I said, but what is the anointing? <laughs> I just told you, it's the power of God to remove burdens and destroy yokes. I said, now imagine for a moment, I have not been raised in church my whole life. Could you explain the things of God come on, to somebody man. that has not known your God? You better come on. Yeah. Come on now. I do a lot of teaching about, about reaching a millennial generation. Yes. And one of the biggest things that you will have to overcome if you want to reach this generation is not being afraid of the word why. Uh huh. Yes, that's right. Come on. Preach. It's not being afraid of the word why. Why? That's right. Why do we do this? Uh huh. Why is it this way? Uh huh. Why do why? we dress like this when you come to church? Why, why do we sit? Why do we shout? Why do we lift our hands? Why do we do this? Why? Why? Does, why does God allow these things to happen? Why this God that you say is so full of love? Why do do these things happen in the earth? Why would a God allow? these things to happen. Why do you have church the way you do? Mm. Amen. Now, I was raised in a generation that, because I said so, right. <laughs> was how you were raised. Yeah. Um, and church operated the same way. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
See, I, I've come to understand the reason the church has such a hard time with that question is because the church doesn't know the answer. Mm. All right. All right. That's why people get upset when they're challenged uh -huh. because they don't have knowledge to back up what they do. Uh -huh. The answer to why you have church the way you have church is because that's the way you've always had church. Uh -huh. Not because you understand the biblical precedent for it. Not because you understand the theological foundation for it. It's because that's the way you've always done it. I believe God is this, not because I've studied the word of God for myself, but because I remember what the pastor preached. Uh -huh. Come on now. See, see, we have raised, over the, over, over the years, we have raised a church that is, a, a, that, we have raised a church that is a mile wide and an inch deep. We have raised a church that shouts and dances but doesn't understand anything. Why? Yeah. Don't understand why. They don't understand. They, they, they don't know what they believe and why they believe it. That's true. Come on. That's so true. They know what's been told to them. They know what church has said about them. They know what church has said about God, but they have not gone and studied for themselves. So when someone comes to you and says, why do you do it? You feel threatened. You feel challenged. You feel persecuted. But underneath all of that is fear because you know deep down you don't know. Uh -huh. And so now they're left uh, because they can't get answers from you. Now they're looking for their answers somewhere else. Now, now they're looking for their answers in other faiths and other religions, and I can be spiritual with, without having to go to church. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Preach, sir! Because the church can't answer their questions. Yeah. Yeah. Elder, this is good carrying on. Right the now. church can't answer their questions. Why do you believe what you believe? Yeah. Do you know? Do you really know this God you claim to serve? Yes, man. <laughs> Jesus, preach, elder. Yeah. You really are. Yeah. <laughs> Walking heavy. See, the old oil said, it's enough to lift your hands. It's enough to make real good noise. It's enough to buck and shout and dance and speak in tongues. It's enough. To do the things of God uh -huh. without understanding the thing. Know. Know. Uh -huh. you know that. that was the old oil. Yeah. The old oil said we can lift our hands and buck and fall out. Yeah. You know. And that's all that's required. That's, uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's, all you that's all that's required. That's what the old oil said. But see, this new oil, this new oil says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, so I'm going to make sure they, they don't perish anymore. Yeah. I'm gonna, then this new oil says, I'm about to, in all you're getting, get an understanding. Yeah. That's what this new oil says. Yeah. This new oil is about to have us standing up strong and bold and going out and saying, you want to know why we believe what we believe? Let me tell you why we believe what we believe. I can give you my personal experience with it, and then I can show you what the Bible says about it. Elder, Amen. Amen. Huh. Lord. This is this is this is what God is calling for in this hour. See, we 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 we've huh, we we have gotten comfortable in our ignorance. Yes, that's true. We've gotten comfortable in our ignorance, and then we wonder why no one's coming. Jesus. Huh. If you were in a relationship with somebody, a friendship, relative, and the only thing they gave you was cliche, mm -hmm. you're like, I'm really going through. And they say, tomorrow's a new day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm really hurting. The sun will come out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh. That's your bottom dollar. At some point, you feel, are they really listening to me? Yeah. 
Are they really invested in me? Because everything they're saying is so surface. That's why when I challenged my friend about what the anointing is, I said, can you define that without using church language? Probably not. The anointing is God empowering you, giving you strength and ability to do what he's called you to do. Yeah, that's right. That's it. That's it. The strength and ability to do what God calls you to do. Now we can dress it up and make it sound real good. But that's what it is. If you really understand a thing, you can explain it to a three-year-old and a college professor. <laughs> if you really understand a thing, you can explain it at the basis level and in the most complex terms. If you really understand it. Now, if all you can do is repeat what you've heard, mm -hmm. see, 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 then that's all you can do yeah. is repeat what you've heard. Mm -hmm. And see, this is this is the generation that we have now. A church that repeats what they heard. A church that repeats what they heard. They all speaking the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're all repeating what they heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand what they heard means. Ooh. They don't understand what, what they heard means. Yeah. It sounded good. Yeah. It touched an emotional place in me. Mm -hmm. I got excited about it. Mm -hmm. And I held on to it. But it never actually got into my understanding the principle of the thing, the concept of the thing. Look, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all off the page here. Let me come down here. Come on. Because I'm going a whole different direction this morning. All right. Walk what you feel, sir. When we understand, when we get to a place of understanding, there is a power that comes from that understanding yeah, that we have not tapped into. Mm -hmm. Because we do not, because we haven't operated in that understanding, we have operated in the power that comes from agreement. Mm -hmm. There is a power that comes from agreement. When, when an entire corporate body is united, there is a power that comes from agreement. That is a true and biblical thing. Yep. There is a power that comes from agreement. There, 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 is, there, is, there, is, there is a power that comes from agreement. And the, the church has been operating simply under the power of agreement. That's the church. The, the moves of God that we've experienced have been moves of God based on agreement. Agreement is what we saw in the upper room. They were all with one accord in one place. And the power of God fell in that place because of their agreement. Yes. We saw the same thing uh, at the Tower of Babel because they were all speaking the same right, language. Right. Nothing would be withheld from them. There is a power that has come from agreement. And the dispensation of the church that we are in right now, that we have been in, was based simply on the power of agreement. We have hundreds of years of church history. That, just that entire dispensation of the church was simply based on the power that came from agreement. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to walk a little deep today. Come on, um, help. Uh, it, the, the, the dispensation we were in was based on the power of agreement. You still with me? But this next dispensation, this dispensation that God is calling us to now, is not simply based on the power of agreement. The, the dispensation that God is calling us to now is based on the power of our understanding. The Bible says in, in the Old Testament, um, it said that the people that know their God will be strong, will be strong yeah. and do great exploits. That's the book. That is and, and, and this next dispensation is happening uh, in that one phrase right there. The people that know their God. The people that know their God. See, God's been dealing with me lately because, because uh, uh, that is the area that the church has been lacking in. We were talking about new oil. The new oil that God is calling us to now is to know our God. 
To know our God. Not know about Him, not know what we heard, not know what happened in the past, but to know our God. To know everything about Him. To know how He thinks. To know how He breathes. To know how He feels. To know how He operates. To know how He makes His decisions. To know what He meant when He said this. To know what He meant when He said that. When we read Scripture now, the prayer that we pray is now, God, give us eyes of understanding. Cause the eyes of our understanding to come open so that I can know your will. So that I can know your principle. So that I can know who you are. And when I know you, I will be strong. When I know you, I will do great things. When I know you, the lost will begin to come back to the church. When I know you. That's what we're after right now. Yes. I'm after a church that knows their God. Yes. Yes. I'm after a church that knows their God. Yes. And here's the thing. When you know your God, you'll yes. recognize him wherever he shows That's up. That's right. That's right. Come on, preach. You'll recognize him because you know him wherever he shows up. Yes. There was a movie that came out recently. I forget what the name of it was, but the principle of the movie was this. This girl was in a relationship with someone, and every day that person woke up as a different person, and they had to recognize who that person was wherever they go, wherever they, or whatever form they took. Uh, so, so it might look like one thing this day, and it might look like something else the next day, and she had to be able to recognize who he was every time, no matter what form he took, and she was able to do that because she knew who he was. She knew it. She knew it. She knew it. If you know your God, you'll recognize him even if it doesn't look like the way yes. it used to look like. Yes, sir. When you know your God, you'll recognize him no matter what form he takes. If you know your God, you'll recognize him whether he's dressed like this or in shorts and suit tops. You'll recognize your God because you know him. And listen, I, I told you my subtitle was how the church has gotten away with murder because we've killed the move of God because we didn't recognize him. Jesus. We've killed the move of God because we didn't recognize it when it happened. Because it didn't look like the last thing. Because it didn't look like the last time we saw him move. We rejected the next move. We rejected the next move just because we couldn't recognize God. And the reason we couldn't recognize him is because we didn't know him. Uh -huh. mm. You didn't know him. We knew what he used to look like. <laughs> and let that define. Mm. Uh. We, we did what the Pharisees did. My 23 mind. years, mm. 40 and two generations, you've been waiting for this Messiah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Messiah is walking among you. Yeah. Performing miracles, doing work. Doing work. Yeah. But because it interrupted your agenda, yeah. uh -huh. because it disturbed your status quo, uh -huh. you better preach, yeah. sir. Not only did you reject him, you crucified him. Yeah. Yeah. Him, but you strung him up. You 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 killed. You crucified. What you didn't understand. Mm. When you walk through the story of Jesus, there are a couple of things that stick out. Uh, one of the things that always that always uh, catches my attention is John the Baptist. John the Baptist spent years saying. Uh, uh, get ready because Jesus is coming. Uh -huh. Get ready because Jesus is coming. Yeah. Get ready because Jesus is coming. But there was a point when John was like, um, are you the one? He sure did. Uh -huh. Or should we wait for another? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now watch what Jesus said in return. Jesus said, go back and tell John the blind see. The blind see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the lame walk. Basically, what Jesus said was, uh, uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the information you need to recognize who I am. Because John might have had something else in mind. John might have had a different image in his head of what Jesus was going to look like. So, so because it didn't match with what he thought it was going to look like, he was wondering if this was actually Jesus. And Jesus said, John, I know you know who I am. So I'm going to give you the information that it takes for you to recognize me. And John said, well, that's all I needed to know. I know that's God now. I know that's Jesus now. Because I know God. I know him. I know him. And I can recognize yes, him in whatever form he takes. Yes, sir. Because I know him. I know him. Because I know him. Yes, sir. Intimate. Intimate. My, my, my. So where other people went all of Jesus' life not recognizing him, yes. all it took was one conversation. John said, I think, I think it is. I'm just not sure. Can you help me? Amen. And Jesus said, listen, uh, again, this, this, is, this is what's happening. And John said, oh, yeah, oh, that's him. That's, him. <laughs> that's the one. That's him. That's the one. Yeah. Hold that's on. the one. Because I know him. Yeah. I can recognize him. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, John might have been one of the ones that thought the Messiah was going to be this conquering king. Uh huh. Because um, see, that's what they expected the Messiah to do. Yeah. They expected the Messiah to come in and conquer and overthrow Rome and set Israel back where it was supposed to be. That's right. So when you got this son of a carpenter coming in uh, all humble, mm -hmm. quiet, mm -hmm. not trying to raise an army and overthrow a government, it's not what I expected it to look like. Mm -hmm. but, but, but because it's not what I expected, because it's not what I thought it was going to look like, not what I was told it was going to be, I, I'm rejecting it. Uh -huh. Watch this. Not only am I rejecting it, I see it as a threat it. to what I have. <laughs> I will kill it. Sir, Jesus. it's a threat. My, my, my. What you have. My, my. Because it disturbed it. my peace. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I see it as a threat. Yeah. To what I have. Yeah. I've invested something mm. in this title. Well. <laughs> I've invested something. Oh, you will address me by my title. Come on. Okay. Come on. I didn't go through all this church for nothing <laughs> for you not to address me by my title. Uh, wow. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wow. Uh oh. I'm a. I'm a clerk on my job, but I'm an elder in the Lord's church. Yes. Come on now. You, you better say that. Yes, sir. So you will address me by my title. Yes. Oh. Yes. Wow. You will follow protocol. Yes. yes. Preach. And address me by my title. Mm. I had somebody tell me that. Mm. I, I, I said, uh, Good to meet you. Um, my name is McCall. What's your name? Uh, Pastor so and so. Really? That's what your mother named you? <laughs> now, Talk, sir. now, you better say that. She had a plan. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you better say it. Amen. Preach. And they were so serious about it. Like, my name is Pastor so and so. No, that's not your name. That's, not your name. Right. that's the title you're clinging to desperately. Oh, that's so good. Because you've wrapped your identity up in that title. Oh, you better preach. Because you, 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 you made your whole life about that title and the respect you feel you deserve. From the regular church people. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Because, because, can, can I help somebody? Because the church was the only place where people that had no authority in the world could have authority. The church was, 
was the only place for some people. Like you, you, you're not in charge of nothing on your job. You coming with a blade? Go ahead and cut. cut you're not in charge of nothing. Cut, sir. No thing. Not, not even the pencil. No thing. <laughs> But she come to church. Uh huh. In church, everything. Yeah. 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 And I got a title. I'm hell. I'm not a regular usher. I am the chairman of this deacon board. Lord have mercy. Yes. Yes. Elder, you better preach. See, but here's the thing. The Bible says, I've given these gifts to men. Yes. Not for the edification of their ego. That's not what he said. That's not what the Bible says. No. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I've given these gifts for the edification of the body. Of the body. Body of God. So well, you your title you. is not to build you up. Yes. That's right. If the biggest beneficiary of your title is you, baby, you got it wrong. Because God gave that gift to men for the edification of the body. Make me close up. I, 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 he said, I, I gave these gifts so that my body could be built. You're not a pastor so you can carry a briefcase and have armor bearers. You're a pastor so the person in that fourth row can be built up. And if that person in that fourth row is not leaving, feeling bigger than when they walked in the door, yeah. baby, you a sorry pastor. Yeah. And yeah. you should have stage on that. Let me tell you something. God has, God has, God has elevated uh, uh, overseer along to the to the office of bishop. Now, uh, I know a lot of people with the title, and they're giving them away like candy now. Come on, man. But let me tell you, that's a real one there. That's a real This man would give his last to make sure you're blessed. He will give his last to make sure you're blessed. To make sure you're built up. To make sure you're edified. And see, that's what this is for. It's, it's not just to wear the clothes and have the title and have the ring and have all the, the, the vestments and, 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 and the crozier and the, and the and it's, it's not for all of that. That's right. It's not. not you want to be called evangelist? Get out there and evangelize. That's right. That's right. Speak the word. Jesus. You call yourself an evangelist, but the only people that hear about your God are the people that come to your church. My, my, my. Walk as heavy as you got to walk, sir. You want to call yourself missionary? Get out this country. Go tell somebody. Show the love of God. Yes, yes, yes. See, that was the older one. That was the older one. The older one made titles a thing to attain, mm. to go after, yeah. a status symbol, yeah. a place where now I get to tell people what to do. Uh -huh. Lord have mercy. Th th this is this. Th it made it, it made it an end unto itself. It made church the reason for church. Mm. This is not why you have a church. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. This room uh -huh. is the smallest uh -huh. ex 
expression of what the church is. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. This room is not the object of church. Yeah. The object of church is to get out there so more people understand what's happening in here. Come on. If this is the, if this is a hundred percent of your church experience, wow. you missed it. Wow. <laughs> you missed it. Thank you, Jesus. But we've made church an end unto itself. Mm. We have church. Yes. But we stopped being the church. Mm. We stopped being the church. The church. We stop being, here we go, disciples. Yes. 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 Disciples. You know how disciples were defined in the Bible? They left everything they knew to follow Jesus. They left everything they were comfortable with and walked with both feet into something new. Mm -hmm. They spent their life trying to understand this Jesus they were following and make sure their life looked like his. What are we? Hmm. What are we? What are we? What are we doing? Why are we here? What is different about you today than it was yesterday? You say you have a relationship with him. How is it changing you? That's right. Here we go. How is it changing the places you go? That's right. Uh -huh. Now, uh -huh. you better come on. <sighs> All this power you say you have. <laughs> how is it changing the places you go? What's different on your job because you work there? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you more personal. What's different in the house you live in? Because you're there. Yes, sir. Lord Jesus. My, my, my. God, please use him. Keep using God. Acts 2. Disciples in the upper room. Spirit of God fell. Every man heard the gospel in their language. Mm -hmm. Peter stood up. Preached a five minute message. 3,000 souls came. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. There are four people in your house. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't to make you feel bad. That's right. Amen. You've got to recognize where you are before you can get where you're going. That's right. Amen. 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 You're preaching, sir. Here's the good news. All it took was one person's commitment. That's all it took was one person's commitment. And everything happened from there. If you can make up your mind today that today I'm about to be a real one. I'm going to be a disciple. I'm going to be a disciple that knows and understands and, and uncovers everything I can about my God. I'm going to be someone that welcomes the child. You want to know? I can tell you. 
This is why I lift my hands. This is why my church sounds like this. And because I understand biblical principle, I, I know how to separate. I know how to separate culture from doctrine. Come on now. Come on. Oh, here we go again. I, I know how to separate culture from doctrine. Can I help you? Yes. A lot of what you call church is culture. It's culture. It's culture. We are black people. And we have church a certain way. It's not that it's not biblical. But it's not, it's not prescribed uh -huh. that way. Yes, sir. It's based on biblical principle, but expressed through our culture. I love this. It's based in biblical principle, but it's expressed in our culture. Right. The Bible says praise him in the dance. Yes. If you go to India, uh -huh. that dance is going to look one way. Yeah. It does not look like ours. Like Thank That's you. Right. If you go to Finland, uh -huh. that dance is not going to look like ours. That's right. That's right. If you go to Seoul, South Korea, You're talking, sir. that dance is not going to look like ours. Yeah. But we so crazy. That we're going to church like that and say they're not having church. That's true. Since they're not doing this, because we've convinced ourselves that culture is doctrine. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. You just got to know what it is. Yeah. Talk about tuning up. Nothing, nothing's wrong with it, but you got to know what it is. Uh, uh, can, you, can you hear the message? When it's given like this? Or does it have to be given like this? That's what a move of God looks like. Amen. 
Because that's what it looked like for us. Thank you. That's how we came through. That's how we got it. That's how we got it. Uh, thank you. Right here. It's not a rejection of the God in that. Thank you. It's just an embracing that God is bigger than that. Yes. Speak the word. Called well. That God is bigger than that. Yes, God. He is. <clears throat> yeah, he's the God of the whirlwind, but he can also be the God of a still small voice. Yes. Talk the book, sir. Talk the book. That's the book. Talk that book. Talk that book, sir. Good word. This, this, this new oil. New oil. This <laughs> new oil says, uh, I'm, 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 I've rejected the king based, that, was, that was king based on stature. Mm. And who did we bring in for the new king? Somebody that was rejected uh -huh. by his father. Yeah. Mm. When, when, when Samuel came to Jesse's house looking for sons, mm -hmm. he didn't even think about David. He didn't think about Brought in every other one of his sons and mm -hmm. left David out in the field because it couldn't be David. Mm -hmm. yeah. Couldn't be David. Yeah. No, it's, it's going to be one of these because they resemble Saul. Because they resemble Saul. It's got to be one of them. That oldest boy, he looks like a kid. That, 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 yeah, it's, it's going to be one of them. Even Samuel, when, when Jesse's presented his sons, Samuel's like, well, surely this is the one. Because don't, don't miss this, Samuel still hadn't gotten over Saul yet. So Samuel's eye was still looking for something that looked like Saul. For another Saul. Yeah, uh, 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 he heard God say new. I'm, I'm gonna give you a new king, uh -huh. but but all of his, his, his all of his desires, all of his attention, his focus was still stuck on Saul. So he's looking for another Saul. Yeah. 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 Dude, he's looking for another Saul. Samuel said, "Surely this is the one, because he looks like the old thing. Uh -huh. like Surely this is God." Because they're making the kind of noise I'm used to. Right. Mm. God said, no, that's not him. That's not him. So we go through all the signs. And Sam was like, I know I heard God say the new king was here. Do you have any other signs? And Jesse's like, well, I mean, there's David. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, technically, yeah, I got another one. There's, there's David. Uh huh. You better but, pray. I mean, it wasn't going to be him. Because he doesn't know anything like it. He do not know nothing. Yeah. He doesn't know anything like what I'm used to. Uh huh. He doesn't know anything like what I'm used to have church. Doesn't look anything like what we used to call the move of God. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. No, 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 no. Okay. That's why I didn't bring him in, because there was no way it was going to be David. Mm. Can I help you? Yeah. What God is about to do is going to catch you by surprise. Because yeah. it's not going to look like anything you were expecting. Yeah. It's not going to look like anything you were expecting. It's not going to look like anything you were expecting. It's going to be something that you rejected and said, this couldn't be God. And that's going to be the one thing God uses to turn your life completely around. God rejected Saul and re God, God rejected the people's choice and raised his choice. God rejected someone who just wanted the title of king and raised up somebody who was happy being in the field. 
God rejected somebody that looked like what a king should look like and said the things a king should say and rejected him for somebody that was out in the field worshiping him. Worshiping in a non-traditional setting. Worshiping in a non-traditional way. Worshiping in a way that, 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 that didn't look like what everybody else was doing, but God heard it. It, it, looked, it didn't look like everything else, what everyone else was doing, but God said, this is a man after my heart. He's not after my title. He's not after position. He's not after any of these things. The one thing that he's after is my heart. David even put it in one of his songs. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and this one thing I seek after. Oh, oh. Yes. 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 Uh -huh. 
Oh, y'all look real saved and churchy in here. But how many of you would still look that saved and churchy if you went through your text messages? Yeah. All right. Yeah. In your browser history. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, God loves you. So how dare you reject what God loves? And just like God loves you where you were, still loves you where you are, and will continue to love you where you're going. He can do the same for anybody. So you can come in here with higher heels than my wife and better makeup. And I will not mind. We will lift our hands right here together. And we will worship this God until he changes both of us. What you say, both? Both of us. That, that, that's what I said. That's what I thought I heard. Cause, cause, yeah, cause you, you not as safe as you think you are. That's right. Yes. 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 I don't know where we get this from. I don't know where we get this idea from that because we're in here, we're better than the ones out there. That because we're in this church, that then all of a sudden we're not still sinning and we're not still letting God down and we're not still breaking His heart on a daily basis. sin doesn't look like their sin. I think my sin is okay. And it all sinks in God's nostril. Well, call well preached then. God will look at you stealing pens from work and feel the same and feel the same way about you that he does with the woman sleeping with three other people's husbands. When we talk about evangelism, we're quick to say I'm going after the drug addict and the prostitute because that's not what we're doing. Uh -huh. That's right. Uh -huh. In public. Oh, we're, we're, we're quick to go after those. Oh, yeah, we got something we can offer them. I offer Christ to you because I'm dressed right now. I, I, I got my suit on now. I got my, my good my good, my good good skirt on now. I, I'm, I'm good and I can I can go and say something to you. Yeah, I can go talk to the one that's homeless on the street and, and the, the drunk that's on the corner. I feel comfortable talking to them because I can look at them and see what's on them. I can look at them and evaluate what's on them. I can look at them and judge where they are. Meanwhile, I'm sitting home and my life isn't worth a nickel's worth of dog meat. Because I'm still doing things. I'm just, I'm just going to hide in mind. And God will keep in mind under wraps. Walk this floor, son. And we think we're so super saved. And we can stand in judgment of others. Ain't that the one Jesus? That's right. That's right. That was it. After that, all y'all doing something. Yeah. <laughs> all us. I'm not exempt. Just like I got this microphone in my hand. Come on, come on, sir. Thank you, Jesus. All have sinned. Yeah. And come short. Maybe I'm not doing what I used to do, but I'm doing something. Oh yeah. I don't. I, I, that case, I can't break nothing else. I just want to break that. That 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 judgment, that 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 spirit in the church that says, "Cause I'm not doing the obvious." Just because I stopped sleeping with people, Jesus. all of a sudden I'm better than the one that is. Yeah. 
What you mean? <laughs> If I can't break nothing else, I really want to break that. In the church universal, not just here. My prayer, I've gone, I've gone through, I have done too much in my life to ever stand in judgment of somebody else. The struggle is real. And there are times when, when, when I say, you know what, I, you know, if I wasn't saved, <laughs> I mean, thank God I'm saying. But then, just because I don't do, don't mean I forgot how to do. If anything, time and experience has taught me not to. Yes. Has has shown me what, what the what the what the the better choice is. Yeah, that's it. But it's a daily choice. And ever even though I'm making the right choices in this area, I'm still making wrong choices in other areas. Yeah. But you got whole churches uh -huh. built on this false concept of holiness. Yeah. Listen, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Built on a false concept of holiness. Yes, yes. That my holiness is wrapped up in the, in these key things I'm no longer doing. And once I've checked every box on this list, now I'm holy. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, God's up in heaven talking about who's standing? Who said you're holy? That's from where I'm standing. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's still filthy rags. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But we feel so superior. Mm -hmm. That's why when we talk about evangelism, we talk about the drunk on the corner. Mm -hmm. but we don't talk about the CEO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't give our real testimonies. Mm -hmm. We give the sanitized, edited for church versions of our testimonies. PG-13. Like those movies that come on TV and say the following film has been edited for content. So it can be broadcast here. <laughs> That's how our Great testimonies elder. are. That's right. That's how our testimonies are. And because we've told that testimony for so long, we forgot how bad we used to be. So now we, we've told that testimony so often, we think that's the truth. We think that's the truth. We think that's all we ever did. Not at all. That, that, that one time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that becomes the truth now because we've convinced ourselves. We've told that lie for so long, and that's what it is. We've told that lie for so long. It's so far from the truth. And now we believe that's the truth. Uh -huh. Oh, we were never really that bad. <laughs> Say it again. Oh yeah, no, I was. I was. Mm -hmm. Like everything I was big and bad enough to do. Trust me. <laughs> and we give these, you know, uh, God saved me from a miserable life of sin testimonies. <laughs> he said, if you were miserable, you weren't doing it right. <laughs> Say that again. I'm old. I had a lot. Oh, because I was in sin. I wasn't miserable. I was good at it. Right? Me too. Because that's what sin is designed to be. Sin is designed to attract you. Sin is designed to feel good to you. That's right. 
That's what sin is designed to do. Right. Now, the, 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 the church version of that is, I was miserable. Uh -huh. and, I, and I chose Jesus so I wouldn't be miserable anymore. Yeah. And that creates a false narrative. Yeah, sure because now you've made Jesus uh, only an option for somebody who, who is miserable. Now you've made Jesus not a better choice, but the only choice that made sense because why would I continue in something I was miserable in? And if that's your gospel, it only reaches a certain kind of person. That's why all your evangelism goes to the drunk man on the corner because you can say, I can offer you a better way. Because your whole gospel is based on the fallacy of that testimony that God saved me from a miserable life of sin. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you have nothing to offer somebody saying, well, I might not know Jesus, but I'm sure not miserable. Uh-huh. I'm driving this nice car, living in this nice house, got this real pretty wife. Uh-huh. And a prettier girlfriend. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Say it like it is. Life is good. Yeah. Now what's your gospel? Mm -hmm. It ain't so. Now what's your gospel? <laughs> that was the old oil. Mm -hmm. That was how we presented the gospel with the old oil. Mm -hmm. See, the new oil says, listen, whatever your life is now, God's not coming to make your to rescue you from your life. Amen. God's coming to rescue you from your afterlife. Amen. God's coming to improve your condition here. And give you better options when you're gone. Yes. 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 Now Jesus becomes an informed choice. Jesus. Not just a life raft. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow. How many people got saved because they chose Jesus? Or got saved because they were scared of hell? Mm. See, this new oil presents an informed choice uh -huh. for Jesus. Right. Uh right. -huh. Not uh, a choice based on fear. Hell is real. Yes, real. Hell is real. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, it, uh, we're not rejecting the principles of God. Hell is real. Uh -huh. And it enlarges itself daily. Yes. That's the book, sir. But I don't want to be in a relationship with someone that only chose me because they got out of a bad relationship. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody that is with me because I, I don't treat them like their own relationship. Uh-huh. Come I don't want to be with somebody that's only with me because they couldn't pay their bills and I got money. Oh. I don't want to be with somebody that's only with me, not because they love me, not because they got to know me and said, you're the one I want to be with, but just because I was a better alternative than the bad situation they were faced with. Yeah, I can stay here all day. Do this, it. This is this is my do it. This is my jam here. <laughs> do it. <laughs> because I'm I'm. There is so much that is waiting. There's there's an entire population of people that's not connecting with the church because the church is not giving them something to connect to. Come on. Because church is what we do on Sunday mornings. Yeah. And we we go to work and we operate in our lives. And you know, people know you're a member of Kingdom Life, but uh -huh. it's a fact. Mm. It's not really making a difference. It's not really connecting with people. They just know you're a member of a church. Uh -huh. they see? That's it. They, they know you're a member of a church. Maybe you don't curse when everybody else curses. Maybe. Maybe. You know, maybe, you know, 
they know maybe when everybody's going out, you, know, you get a soda instead of something to drink. Maybe. But that's it. Nothing about you is introducing Christ to them. Nothing about you is introducing Christ to them because that's all that's been required of you. Mm -hmm. That was enough. For the yeah. whole church, that was all you had to do. That was all you had to do. Just, you, you know I'm a member. And every now and then I'll say, do you want to come to church with me? Hmm. well. I'll invite you to my church because, you know, that's what we do. That's right. You know, I go to Kingdom Life. You know, we have service at such and such a time. If you ever want to come, let me know. I'll give you a ride if you want. I'm like, well, you know, we'll make it real friendly. <laughs> and that's what we do. <clears throat> do they see the joy that Christ brings in your life? Amen. Do they see the difference in you, in you uh -huh. from everyone else? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is there a light that shines when you walk into yeah. the world? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I tell you what, the only difference between me and you is when I'm going through the stuff you're going through, I got help. Jesus. My life in Christ is not problem free. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. I've been, we've contemplated divorce and been saved. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We've almost been homeless. Yeah. And say, I've been fired from jobs and say, the only difference is when these things happen, I had a strength that I could rely on that helped me get through these things. I had something else that I could hold on to that would get me through these situations. So yeah, I can come in here. Somebody asked me, like when uh, my wife had a, a health scare recently and you know, people, were, I'm showing up to work, and people are like, how are you here when all this is going on? So listen, it is so not me. It is so not me. I was just, I was in the car, I was worshiping on the way here, and I was just praying. I was like, you know, God, you got to give me this. And so he's helping me. That's all I said. Now, a couple weeks later, one of my coworkers, who is an atheist, had a, a situation with her child, and she said, listen, I know, I know, you know, I don't want this to turn into a thing, but if you can, you know, just do what you do, pray, you know. That wouldn't have happened if the only thing I did was invite her to my church. That's right. But I showed her in a practical yeah. way the difference that Christ is making in my life. Yeah. How I walk with him daily yeah. without being spooky and deep. That's right. But it's a part of my life. Yeah. Not just the day of my week. Yeah. And because they recognize that she, she said, listen, I, I, I'm in a situation. I need all hands on deck. I know you do this prayer thing. Can you do that too? <laughs> I'm more than happy to. <laughs> I'm more than happy to. Yeah. We can. I, 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 I prayed, and when uh, it worked out, she came back and was like, "No, I want to hear you say I told you so." You know, it, 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 I said, "Listen, I'm just glad it worked out. I'm just glad yeah. uh, that it happened the way you wanted to happen. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just glad it worked out that way." Yeah. And left it at that. Uh huh. Now, I don't know seed when planted. or where it's going to happen, but that seed yeah. Yeah. is going to turn into something yeah. in her life. Yeah. It might be years down the road. Yeah. Yeah. I had another, another uh, co-worker at a, at a previous job. Um, she was the son of, I mean, I'm sorry, she was the daughter of a pastor. Um, a lesbian in a relationship, rejected by her family. She worked for me, and we were talking, and she told me once, she said, you know, you're the only Christian I can talk to. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I said, no, that's a darn shame. Uh, it is. It is. That is a shame. 
Because that's uh, we we talked. She knew how I felt about it. I knew where she was, and we still talked. We related to that. She she told me that she was having some issues with with her girlfriend, and I listened to her issues with that's her right. girlfriend. Uh -huh. I, we talked. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We talked. That's right. That's right. I never compromised what I believed in. I just gave her a listening ear. She knew what I believed, and knew that wasn't changing. All well. But because I didn't reject her and I talked to her like a person. She said, you're the only Christian I can talk to. I'm the daughter of a pastor. With a whole church full of people. And her supervisor on her job is the only Christian she can talk to. How many people can't talk to you? Mm. Can't talk to you. You're preaching. Because they know as soon as they say something, you're going to say some church cliche. That's right. There. Preach. That. Yes, sir. They come and tell you the, 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 the gay guy on your job comes to tell, tell you something about his husband, and, and you're already making a face. The devil is a liar. That's what you're saying. You're already making a face. Listen, we can talk. Just don't bring up your relationship because. You know, I'm a Christian. That's too deep. Too deep. Too deep. To Call be well. Good. Too deep to be any good. <laughs> Woo. Jesus was at the well. Sir. With the woman. Sir. Amen. And uh, so you're gonna fool with that too? he said, you know, give me a drink. Uh-huh. Now, it's probably a good looking woman. <laughs> because she was clearly used to attention from men. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thought Jesus was flirting with her. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's the text. Huh? She was like, uh, mm -hmm. well, sir, you, you don't have anything to draw water with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Woo! Come on, come on, come on. Hold on. And Jesus <laughs> threw it right back at him. Yeah, if you knew what I offer, yeah, 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 you'd never be thirsty again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all better read your Bible. Jesus ain't gay. He worked at us. All these years of the preaching now. Oh, you never heard of that tone. <laughs> <laughs> so then Jesus said, okay, now that I've got your attention, where's your husband? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She said, because now she still hasn't caught on yet, right? So she's, I don't have a husband. And that's when Jesus brought the hammer down. He says, you're right. <laughs> You've had multiple husbands. And the one you're with right now isn't yours. Come on now. Come on. My, my, my. <laughs> 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 she said, wait a minute. How you doing this? I mean, there's something different about you. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm, I'm seeing something different uh -huh. about you. I know men. But you different. There's something there's something different about yeah. you. Yeah. You want something from me that it's not the same thing everybody else wants from you. My, 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 my. That's it. Jesus gave a real quick lesson on evangelism. First, I meet you where you are. I communicate, get you to connect with me. Yes, yes. And then I bring you to where I need you to be. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to connect with you where you are right now. Uh huh. Jesus. And then I'm going to bring you to where we need to be. But I can't ever make that, I can't ever bring you to that place if we haven't first made a connection. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to connect with you first. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Huh. Jesus never compromised nope. in that conversation. 
never compromised, mm -mm. didn't come down to her level, no. but he connected with her where she was. Yes. And then very quickly brought her to a place where she's like, wait, no, there's something different about you. Yes. I perceive yeah. you're a man of God. Mm -hmm. See, when it's real, when it's real, you don't have to talk about it. <laughs> when it's real, you ought to announce it. Mm -hmm. When it's real, yes, you don't have to announce it. No, you don't. My God, preach it, sir. Because I'm going I'm to see it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Something about you is going to feel different to me. Yes, sir. Yes. I might not know what it is. Uh-huh. But mm, it's not gonna be, you're not going to look like, I, I don't see you the way I see uh, other men. Because yeah. there's something different about you. Something uh -huh. different. Uh -huh. Good God of mine. And so Jesus made such an impression on her. Watch this now. Everybody knew who she was. She was real good at connecting with people. Clearly. <laughs> and Jesus used that because the next thing that happened was she said, okay, so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell everybody, come see a man that told me all the things I've ever done. Listen, you might have been a hustler in the street. Uh huh. God doesn't want you to stop hustling. He's going to change what you're hustling for. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. He's going to change your hustle. Yeah. 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 Oh, you was real good on the corner. Yeah. You were real good. You had people running errands for you and doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, they, they, you know, you had somebody on this corner, somebody on this yeah. corner. You were running that whole operation. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. uh, it's in the room. You were running that whole operation. Yeah. And, 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 and now you got saved. And you think God just wants you to reject her? Like, no, no. You're going to make you head of evangelism now. You're going to start running teams on yeah. the same corner. Yeah. Yeah. Because God wants to use. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 Good God of mine. Yeah. 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 I said, listen, if, if, if you got a guy. Think about this. That's running a successful drug operation. Mm -hmm. He is the CEO of a multi-site locate a multi-site operation. Yeah, sure is. He has cash flow in, cash flow out. Mm -hmm. He does budget. He has expenses. Yeah. He staffs appropriately for the distribution that he wants to have. <laughs> you he knows how to cultivate a new customer base. Yeah. He knows how to do marketing. Yeah. He knows how to do advertising. He knows how to develop his brand name. Because I know your stuff is better than his stuff. Uh -huh. I'll come to you for my product um, because I know your stuff will get me higher than his stuff. Now, you take that same person and get them sick. And what are they supposed to do? Now we tell them, all that stuff you know, forget it. My Lord, I'll use it. You learn stuff about business, they teach in business colleges. Use that. Because what you got is an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. All we got to do is change what you're selling. Yeah. Yes, sir. You got to change what you're selling. Yes. Good God Almighty. Yeah. Yes, sir. Woo. I will. This is, this is that new oil. This is that new oil. You ready for it? <laughs> Are you ready for it? Yeah. Cause because because this is this is where <laughs> this is where you got to this is this is that place you got to be ready for. Because mm -hmm. when it comes, and here's the thing, and God bless you, I love you, but everybody's not gonna make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Everybody's not gonna make it. That's right. <laughs> Some of you are gonna say, you know what? I need to find a church because this isn't church. <laughs> yeah. This is a church. Thank you. Uh -huh. I need to find a church that's actually being in the church. Uh -huh. Acting like a church. 
And that's fine. Because no, there's, there's some place that still has that old oil. Mm-hmm. Now. Yeah. Still, still run the same program they ran 30 years ago. Same, same. same pressure. Some of the pastors still preaching the same sermons they preached 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> They still are three Hebrew boys. Yeah. Mm. Shadrach, Meshach, and a big Negro. <laughs> and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Look, if, if, if that's if that's where you're comfortable, absolutely. Mm-hmm. No love lost. Yeah. Mm. But the new oil that's coming to this house. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I hope you're ready for the ride. Yeah. I hope you're ready for the ride. Yeah. It's gonna upend everything you thought you knew about church. Yeah. It's gonna shatter every old oh, paradigm right. you had. Yeah. It's gonna make you act differently Amen. towards each other Amen. and the communities you're in. Yeah. It's gonna change everything Jesus. you thought church was. Wow. And that's a good thing. It is. And that's a good thing. Because it's time for an oil change. Yeah. It's time for an oil change. Yes, time for oil change. Thank you, God. Because we're not killing any more moves. Amen. Not here. Not at Kingdom Life. We're not killing any more moves. That's right. If if something happens, you're like, whoa, what is this? Pray, seek God, talk to your leadership before you start talking to the street. That's right. Say that again. Say that again. Please do. Before you start talking to the street, if you don't understand something, pray, ask God about it, then go to your leaders, ask them about it. Get understanding. Get understanding. Right. Before you start running people down the street. Before you talk about what you think it is. Find out what it is. Just because you don't recognize it. Because you might not have the whole picture. Get the whole picture first. Yes, sir. Before you run off on your own. Because here's the thing. Samuel said, uh, if I go with this new oil, Saul will kill me. But you know what actually happened? You remember what happened to Saul? Don't be Saul. Don't be Saul. Saul got his neck broken. Mm -hmm. Trying to hang on to what was old. Mm -hmm. Saul invited David into the palace just to throw spears at him. Mm -hmm. Uh Don't be Saul. Don't be Saul. Saul. When this new thing happens, Mm -hmm. understand it, embrace it. Mm -hmm. If you can't understand it and embrace it, just get out of the way. Right. But when you start attacking it, mm-hmm. yeah. you put yourself in the position yeah. of Saul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't be Saul. Don't be Saul. Change is coming. Don't be Saul. I'm done. Everyone's standing. That's good. That's good work.